Blackburn? Terry, it's nice to see you. Could I talk to you for a minute? Certainly, Terry. Won't you have a seat? Mrs. Blackburn, I've been doing some thinking about this class I've taken this semester, Missionary Studies, and I've decided to drop it. Terry, I don't understand. The teacher in the book presents the missionary as having a miserable life. They say that the missionary is a martyr, and I don't agree with them. Sure, they do have some things to give up, but God gives them so much more. The people of Haiti had needs, and with the help of God, I was able to fulfill those needs. And by serving him in this way, he gave me an abundant, joyous life that I could not have found any other place. Look, Kim, she's awake. Terry? Terry, can you hear us? Terry? Terry, you had a bad cut on your head, and we're real worried about you for a while. Do you guys work here? Mm-hmm. It's part of our training. You should see the little babies we delivered this morning. They're real fat and they have real curly hair. They're so cute. You just love being a nurse. It's a good career. We work here five to eight hours, about three times a week. It's really a good thing to get into because, you know, when you get married, no matter where your husband goes, you can always find a job and it's a pleasant place to work and that pay is really good these days and money's good. I think she's getting sleepy again. Let's let her go back to sleep. Yeah, we should leave her. Jesus speaks of the parable of the man who planted the tree in his vineyard. He returned to see that the tree was barren, was not bearing fruit. So many of our lives are just like that. We find ourselves to be barren. Our lives have really no purpose. And I am calling today for a resolve within you to make a life committed totally to the Lord Jesus. That resolve may call you to the mission field. That resolve may call of you to make a commitment that will take you a long ways from home. You may leave the comforts of home. You may find yourself in a position that you would feel lonely. In fact, you may feel as though you were the only one that has made a commitment like that. But your resolve today is to the Lord Jesus. And wherever he may call you, you're making a commitment to go. In the closing moments of this service, I would ask you to simply sit quietly with your heads bowed. Those of you that would like to make a commitment to be fully the Lord's, would you just stand quietly for a moment, thus designating that you are committing yourself to be the Lord's. It may be to the mission field, wherever it may be, you're saying, yes, Lord, I commit myself to be totally yours. Would you stand now? Thank you. If it, was, if it was something I've done or something I could do something about to change myself, I could understand. But I haven't done anything. I've treated you the best I know how to treat you. And still you're, you're running away. Now, I just don't understand, Terry. Look. I mean, that's a nice house. There's nothing like that in Haiti. There's nothing like that in any mission field you're ever going to find. And you know you love that. And you're just going to run away from it. That's the way it's going to be, huh? Father, we thank thee for this and for all thy blessings. In Christ's name, amen. Mom, they had a really neat service at Larry's church today. They talked about the mission field and dedicating your life to it. You know, I think being a missionary would be a very rewarding kind of life. Well, Terry has this idea that she's going to be a missionary. Terry has? Yeah, she stood up in church today and acknowledged the speaker and said she was going to be a missionary. How long have you been thinking about this? For quite some time. 
Terry, you can't be serious. Yeah. Do you have any idea at all the sacrifices that you'd have to make to be a missionary? Well, they talked about it in church, and I've thought about it. With all the luxuries that you've enjoyed and seem to not be able to do without, how in the world could you possibly do it? No, oh, I'm sure I could manage. Well, what about you and Larry? Larry, my mom and dad, and everyone was against me. They didn't want me to leave the things I had here to go to the mission field. But I felt I had to, to be in God's will. And when I let them talk me out of going, well, I would go to church. But what the preacher said would go in one ear and out the other. I'd cringe when I'd hear the word missionary. Thanks for stopping by the table again before you go home tonight because I wanted to leave some uh, brochures with you. Here is a, a pictorial view of Marion College, mm -hmm. uh, which will give you quite a description uh, pictorially of uh, our campus, the students uh, who go there, and the various programs that we offer. Mm -hmm. Also, a couple of special descriptive brochures here I wanted to leave with you. Teacher education is a very important major at Marion, and also our newest major is nursing education. We thought we'd get you up and take you downstairs today. Take you to the lab and show you around the x-ray. Yeah, and you can see some of the good looking men we have around. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. good. Ms. Muncy, this is Terry, and she would like to know some things about your cardiac monitors. Okay. Well, we are an intensive coronary care unit designed to monitor and treat heart patients who are having rhythm disturbances. This is our cardiac electronic mo uh, monitor, and you can see that we get a continuous trace of the patient's electrical activity of his heart. We can see what he's doing at any time. Now, this is very much like an electrocardiogram, except it goes on continuously. You can watch what the patient is doing on this line and freeze this line. This is a special x-ray room. It's a little different from the others. We run everything by remote control from behind a panel. We also do special procedures back here, which is a sterile technique, and we put catheters inside the patient's veins or arteries, and we take pictures um, with dye, and we can take three films per second for as long as we like, and uh, we'll show tumors and aneurysms. Uh, this instrument is uh, a relatively new type of instrument that now counts uh, blood cells uh, in a way that we used to have to count it on the microscope. And uh, uh, we used to have to look up through the microscope into a, what we call a hemocytometer and actually look at the cells and count them on a, uh, a grid. Larry really liked the idea of switching my major to nursing. The years we spent at Marion College were really neat. I really liked spending time with Larry. We'd go for walks or study together. He really cared for me. answer back from law school yet? Yes, I have. I'm glad you brought that up. I've been wanting to talk to you about it. I heard from them about two days ago, and they said that they would accept me, so oh, I'll, great. I'll be going next semester to law school. And Terry heard from the hospital, from Dr. Jackson. He's hired her as a surgical assistant. So it looks like she's going to have a pretty good income going forward and a real good job. So Terry and I are set for next year, and we've been talking the last few months, you know. We've been 
dating for four years now, and, and we decided we'd like to get married. Well, Larry, uh, after four years, I can't honestly say that I'm surprised, but father's never quite ready. However, as well as I know you and as thorough as, and as conscientious as you are, I'm sure that you've thought about all the problems and covered all the bases. The only thing that I'm a little concerned about is the fact that uh, both of you are dependent on her income, and if something should happen before you get out of law school, you could have some pretty tough sledding. I uh, hope the thing that doesn't happen to you that happened to us. You know, we counted on my wife's income when we were married, and she got pregnant. And we had three or four very rough years to go through that we hadn't anticipated. But I know that you two will work it out. Well, what did your folks say when you were accepted in law school? Uh, they, were, they were real happy about it. You know, you feel sure you're going to get in, but you never know until you the last minute when you are accepted, but you know, I'm ready to go real happy about it. It just doesn't seem possible that four years at Marion College are over already. Did you find a job? Yeah, yeah just a couple of weeks ago, I think I need to work for a surgeon. Here to Marion? Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it, I'll tell you. It sounds real good. Yeah, it really is. Terry, you're engaged! <gasps> Terry, it's beautiful! Big enough, my I don't believe it. I came to Marion College because it was a Christian college, and I wanted to be a good Christian. It was good to be able to have fun going to banquets, swimming, skating, seeing movies at school with homemade popcorn and concerts. But I still wasn't happy. I thought I had everything a girl could want, going with a Christian guy, going to a Christian college and had parents who were understanding and loved me. But I had an emptiness inside. I was uncomfortable even when I'd go to chapel. What I'm trying to say is, do you believe that you can love the unlovely? Let Jesus love the unlovely through you. Now let me give you a simple illustration. I was asked one day to go down to the Yuki Indian tribe in the jungles of Bolivia. And I'd never seen a naked jungle Indian. I had never been among them before. I'd never, <laughs> never been in a nudist camp of any type, especially this wild one in Bolivia. So it's repulsive to me and repugnant to have to take off my clothes and before people. But I made up my mind that when I stepped off of that plane, that I would communicate to them with the only language that I knew. And that was the language of love. So as I stepped off the plane, there stood a naked Indian, a man. And he was raven-haired and dark-skinned and, and dark-eyed. And he was filthy dirty. Now, I just reached out to him. And he looked at me, a, a ghostly-looking creature with gray hairs and, and, and a pale skin like an unbaked tortilla. But he came and entered into my arms and I into his. And I gave him a deep hug. And we patted one another on the back, and I buried my nose literally in that filthy hair of his. But you see, it was a beginning. It was a touch of love. And the moment his wife was standing there, she was showing me the baby, and, and a little boy was there, and he was naked, as all the men of the tribe were. The missionary said, you simply can't get the men to wear clothes. Well, that little boy was cold and shivering in the cold monsoon winds of the jungle. And I just reached up and took off a nice Banlon shirt and handed it toward him. But before he could get it, one of the older Indian men came and he took it and he put it on, of all things. And then another man came and he took my undershirt and, and, and put it on. And in a moment, you see, these men had broken their tradition of not wearing clothes. And because they wanted to express appreciation and love to me, they broke their traditions and put on clothes. And you see, I had to be willing to step over the traditional background of my life and take off my clothes down to the waist. So you see, it's a simple thing, but it was a love relationship. Now kids, some of the old things that are passed away in the idea of being called as a missionary to a foreign land is simply that we may have to give up the hope or the idea of being rich in this affluent society and having a big house and a fine car. Then there's a the consideration of the separation of families, those 
intimate folk that we know here to be given up for long interims of time for a stay on the mission field. And then, to bring it down a little more specifically, one of the old things I think that is an involvement in the young Christian's life who wants to live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit and say, Lord, here am I, send me, is the factor of his courtships. We simply can't lose out at the point of choosing the wrong mate. And so if you are right now involved with someone, if you have a sweetheart or a fiance, w would you be willing to be reconciled to the will of God at the point of considering whether or not this person is pleasing in God's plan for you? And if you found that this person didn't fit, would you be willing just to say, well, I can't continue this relationship? And now, young people, I'm going to ask you to stand with me for a moment, and let's sing a hymn of invitation. All I ask is simply that if God, through the Holy Spirit, is speaking to your heart this morning about surrendering your life for full-time Christian service, I want you to come. Just walk out and come down these aisles and make this public commitment to Jesus Christ. I believe it's a sacred moment when God will choose to meet some of you here and it's important that you before God and man come and say Lord here am I send me thank you Lord. God bless you hi Kim Julie hi Terry Terry that's the wonderful thing you did this morning when you went up front I was really amazed I was shocked well I have such a peace about it and it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Now that you're going to go to Haiti with us, you know you'll have to get a passport or a birth certificate to go. Um, Terry, what's Larry going to say about this? You know they're shot, you'll have to get probably a smallpox or tetanus. They recommend those. But what about all your plans with Larry? What's he going to think? And you'll have to get some new clothes because they want you to wear your dresses. Um... up the road to the missionary compound, those people stared at me as if there was something wrong with me. I've never felt so strange. These suitcases are so heavy. I don't understand why those missionaries couldn't come down and pick us up. The road is so dusty. I wonder when we're going to get there. Listen to those drums. What are those? Are those voodoo drums? Why do all these people keep staring at us and think they've never seen any white people before. Oh, this 
you were going to stay. I'll wait to get inside. It's really nice inside. Oh, there's two big bugs in here. Oh, Julie, they're just two little crickets here. This is washing down the drain. This is the outpatient department. The middle building is surgery. Down there is the hospital, the inpatient unit. Julie, what's wrong with this baby? It's neonatal tetanus. Well, how did they get it? It's due to unsterile technique at the time of birth. Evidently, they've used some old razor blade to cut the umbilical cord or a machete or anything just laying around the house. It's just a pity. <laughs> Changed so many bed sheets in my life. I am really worn out. I have been here for six miserable weeks. You know, I'm really getting pretty tired of going over there at six o'clock every morning to the hospital to work. It's so hot and those people are so demanding. You know, there's a boat leaving for the mainland in the morning. Terry, I've been thinking, if I left, would you be willing to go with me? Leave now? does and God's given us so much we can give him back just that little bit. Terry! You can't look in their eyes and say I don't need you. I've got to go now. Goodbye. Okay. Hurry up, Terry! You got everything? All ready to go, Terry? Well... Give the kid to Kim and come on. No, I'm not going to leave now. Terry, get in. No, I can't leave. When I picked Violette up from the road, Kim and I took her back to the house to give her a bath and comb her hair. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, yeah, you like Kim that. Kim found out that 
Her parents had died when she was younger, and she went to live with a missionary's cook. She was almost like a servant, and they couldn't afford for her to go to school, so she'd stay at home and do chores around the house or pound grain. You should have seen her face light up when we put that dress on her. She looked so cute. She smiled real big. She was really happy when we paid some attention to her. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. You want to go No, I really can't. I have to be going back to the hospital. You want to go to the hospital? No. Bon, you want to go to the hospital? Yes. Pas même celle qu'ils ont mis, ils ont acheté dans la caille, ça va faire mal. Yesterday, telling her how happy I was to be able to be working with the people down here. It's too bad that she couldn't have stayed. I think that she would have gotten to like you, Violet. Moi qu'on est bon, j'ai qu'à papa et moi la victoire. Violet, Violet, are you okay? I just got this letter back from Dr. Cook. He says that he'll be able to come in August as he had planned. And he said he'd be able to do those operations. I mentioned the, the cases to him. And uh, I also mentioned about Violet. He feels that uh, with this uh, second x-ray, which shows that the good kidney is becoming affected rapidly by this hypertension and with the increasing uh, rise in the blood urea nitrogen here that he really doesn't think that removing the kidney is going to accomplish anything for her. Hey, Jerry! What you doing? Oh, oh. Man. Yeah, just thinking yeah. outside. It's sunny out today, it's really nice. Nice day. I'm surprised you're on with Violet. Uh, how has she been learning her English? Better in the last couple of days? Mm -hmm. You two are really attached to each other. I always see you walking down by the beach and all around the compound. Mm hmm. You think it's really good that you two get attached like that? Oh, I think it's good. It's good for me because it gives me something to work towards. I mean, you know, a lot of the children die on the island and something could happen to her. You never know. Do you, th do you think something's going to happen to her? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not saying that, Terry. I mean, you know. Hey, it's a nice sunshiny day out. Why don't we go for a walk out down by the beach, OK? OK, OK. I 
idea. I can take Violet to the United States with me. Violet? Yeah. Terry? Violet's gonna die any time. No! Terry! Terry! Yes, Terry, what's the trouble? Dr. Emmett, Kim just told me that Viola's gonna die. Uh, Dr. Uh, Cook just sent us a letter. He talked with Dr. Peterson, too. And they said that uh, it really uh, was the only thing to do would be to operate and take out that malfunctioning kidney. But due to the fact that the other kidney is doing so poorly now from the hypertension, it just... It just doesn't seem like it would be possible to do anything. He he mentioned perhaps getting some dialysis equipment and having a laboratory better set up so that we can check the blood chemistries and things, but uh, we just don't have those kind of equipment here. Well, can't you get one? Well, you know, we just uh, just don't have the money to, to, to get those sort of things, and uh, it'd be difficult for us to... To do that. Dr. Hunter, I've talked to Dr. Emmett, and now you. Isn't there anything that we can do for her? Terry, our medical program is self-supporting. 90% of what we get comes from the Haitian people that we care for. And with what little we have, we try to do as much as possible for as many as possible. This surgery can't be done unless we have the equipment to follow her in the laboratory after surgery. And the only way we could get this equipment would be by a special designated gift for that purpose. Look at these wall hangings and everything. This would be good for raising money. You know, they sold those molas at school, and they, were, mm -hmm. you know, they made quite a bit of money off of those. I'm sure they could offer these. Look at the seashells and this wood carving. They'd really like this. The missionaries sell these things here, so I don't see why they couldn't at home. I have met a little girl, Violette, who I have grown to love very much. But she has a kidney ailment and needs to have surgery as soon as possible. Oh, here's one. Okay. Over there. It's a bright green. Mm-hmm. Let's just pack a few more than broader and then put some of the wooden things in. Just a little cushion. Kim, do you think this is really going to work? Oh, Terry, it's, they'll love it. Come on. with Violette. My attitude changed towards the work at the hospital. I realized how meaningful the work was to me and that it was no longer a burden, but something I found joy in doing. Dr. Hunter, I have to give these pills to her and she has to take two of them four times a day. Would you do that? You do it. Me? Tell her. I can't do that. Tell her. Okay, you tell me what to say. Day grand, day grand, quatre fois par jour. Par jour. Day grand, quatre fois par jour. Day grand, quatre fois par jour. These are sent to help out a little girl who's very sick. And it's our intention that these will be sold. The students here can buy them in the art gallery. Isn't it lovely? Mm. And then the money can be sent back. <laughs> Sorry, I offended you at your house the other day. Moi regret offense you.
Well, Mrs. Peterson, Dr. Peterson, great to see you. Glad to have you here. Terry, I think things are going to work out just fine. I don't know of anything else that you can do right now. Uh, why don't you uh, go to the chapel and uh, maybe have a little word of prayer? Miss Scott, is the anesthesia ready? Yes, Doctor. All right, we'll ask Prosper to pray before we uh, do the surgery. Prosper, pray to him, see you play. Dieu, Papa, nous qui dans le ciel là, nous confions au même Seigneur, nous remettons l'opération ça nous-mêmes. Father, you know how much that I don't want Violette to die. Please give the doctors today guidance. Go on, You must have. Time? You know how much that I need her? You know how much that I love her and that if something happened to her, I don't know what, what I'd do. It's rather a small kidney. Well, it's just what we expected. It would be rather atrophied when we uh, saw the results of the film. Even with the, our being able to dialyze here, I, I suppose with the other kidney acting up the way it is, uh, we haven't got too much of a chance to see a good prognosis here. We've done so much to, together. Times that we've had have meant so much to me. It's just, just so little, Lord. Just don't let anything happen to her. Doctor, I still don't have a blood pressure. Just go. Adrenaline. We've lost her. to love Madame Frederick as a mother. God made me finally realize that he had not made me miserable. All he wanted from me was a willingness to serve him and present his word 
to those people who were lovely, not savages. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If God wanted me in Haiti, then that's the place I would be the happiest. De ma vie, et j'habiterai dans la maison de l'Éternel jusqu'à la fin de mes jours. Hey, Terry, did you tell Mrs. Blackburn? It's really about me going to Haiti. You mean about our going to Haiti? 